once again, it's the man with the flavor. It's Lord Finesse, so run and tell your neighbors to stop sleeping and check out the style I'm freaking. I stop opponents and give hoes the salad treatment. Forget striking out, I'm hitting grand slam. Taking opponents off the stage like a sandman. At the Apollo, I'm Guys, the what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Got a great sort of cheapy for you guys today from the house of Laura Biagiotti. This one is called Roma Puermo. And the way that I found out about this one is talking to a SA at a high-end department store, a guy at the Guerlain counter. Um, he's the dude I always see about Guerlain. He hits me off with samples. He told me about Santel Royal. Um, even gave me a sample of Muguet from my mother. And he was telling me that this was his pretty much every signature scent, even though he wears a ton of Guerlain and some other niche houses. So I was definitely curious. He's an Italian gentleman, by the way, and I had definitely heard of this fragrance, but I had never smelled it and I had never seen it via retail. Uh, I jotted it down on my pickup list because when I looked at it online, it was fairly cheap. Boom, I was at TJ Maxx, about to, to, about to walk out before I before I went, I like to move all the boxes around to make sure that I'm not missing anything behind all the Adidas, Mikel Germain, bullshit. You know, the cool water flankers, all that nonsense. And lo and behold, this was sitting there. I looked at the price, 4.2 ounces for 20 bucks, and I blind bought it. And before we talk about whether that was wise, we'll talk about the house. Laura Bigiotti is an Italian house. Uh, she's an Italian fashion designer who is known as the queen of cashmere. She was born in the early 1940s. Her mother owned a dress store, and they actually did the outfits at that store for Air Italia, the, um, the air, air, um, airline company, and Laura studied archaeology at Roma University, but eventually did join the family business. In 1965, she um, met up with a partner, Gianni Chigana, who later became her husband, and they started their own firm. Initially, they made clothing for and sourced material for other Italian houses, but eventually in 1972, she did launch her own line, and she was one of the first designers, believe it or not to popularize cashmere as a material back then it just wasn't in use due to the price so that was a really big uh contribution to the perfume to the clothing industry on the fragrance side they introduced their first scent in 1992 it was called fiora bianchi for women uh but roma for women and men is the house's far and away biggest hits. The women's edition came out in 1988 and the men's edition came out in 1995. Their fragrance division is now handled by Procter & Gamble who also do Gucci, D&G, Escada and & Rokas and they currently have 27 fragrances in their library. This one was a 1995 release. It currently has five flankers. This one is far and away the most popular and your notes on this one are galbanum, basil, and grapefruit at the top. In the middle you're going to get pine, jasmine, basil, and heliotrope. And then the base, you'll get sandal, patchouli, benzoin, and cedar. Now, this one's actually become a little bit difficult to find online. There are really only a few places that I saw it. Amazon did have it, um, and they're a 75 ml went for $42. Uh, I've seen this size bottle go for $70, $80. Um, on eBay and I think they only come in two sizes. Now as far as the presentation goes, um, the box is beaten up as you can tell mine is Allor Bigiati, Romo Lomo, more beaten up, barcode, um, stain of some sort in the back. I don't know where this one came from, how it got into TJ Maxx, it was the only one, the corner is damaged, and boom, 20 bucks. The bottle, really cool, meant to look like the Coliseum. As you can see, it has the columns, Laura Bigiati, Romo Womo. You have your sticker on the bottom, sort of a fall wooden cap, and a very good um, atomizer that shoots juice really well. So I actually, it's a pretty heavy bottle. The book of glass is frosted. I happen to really like the presentation on this one myself. But better than that, this is an excellent, and I do mean excellent scent. If you like the classics out there, like Third Man uh, by Caron and Chanel's Pour Monsieur and the timeless men's scents, you're gonna like this one. This is another one that to me doesn't feel very much dated and I think could very easily be signature scent worthy. It's gonna open up for you with some citrus. A very 
very nice mix of grapefruit and bergamot, but you're also in the opening get, gonna get just a touch of greenness uh, from the galbanum. And the middle of the scent is beautifully constructed. You've got the continuation of the green with the basil and the pine, but then you've got a hint, and I just do mean a pinch of animalic floral because there is a jasmine note in this. And then you have this almost almondy, watery sweetness that the heliotrope injects. I think throwing the heliotrope into this was a really, uh, really smart play. The dry down is really nice. You get a touch of smoke, very, very little again from the benzoin. And you definitely have a wooded base. The base is sandalwood and cedar. Um, once this one dries down, it does become quite woody and a little bit ambery as well. It's one of those really well constructed scents. It goes through three unique stages and I think the blending was perfect. I think there's just enough um, of every note in this fragrance. It's very masculine, it's very upscale, and it doesn't smell like the materials were skimped on with this scent in the least. Performance on my skin is absolutely exceptional uh, to the point where I oversprayed the first time that I wore this. You have to be careful, it projects and it lasts all day even though it isn't eau de toilette. I think well, it's decidedly masculine, there's no reason a woman couldn't pull this one off. And I think this one could work four seasons out of the year, even the, though it might be a touch stout for the summer heat. Um, you can wear this in all situations, great work scent, casual scent, date scent, night out scent, and this should be a signature scent for many men out there. Comparisons for me on this one are pretty tough. Minotaur by Paloma Picasso is what this one gets a ton of comparisons to on Fragrantica. I haven't smelled that one, I can't weigh on it, in on it. I can tell you the scent that I've smelled that reminds me most of this one is Azara Porom Lo which has the same sort of citrus tones that this one does. Also reminds me a little bit of Noir Absolute version of Lota C and Oscar de la Renta's for men sort of has a spicy citrus thing as well, but this is a very, very unique cologne. If someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this, I think they would tell you that it's unique, it's masculine, it's very versatile, and people will not smell like you when they wear this. I think if someone were trying to talk you out of purchasing this one, they would tell you that it might be hard to find for you, and some people People, I could definitely see some people thinking this is a little too dated for them. I love this scent, if you can't already tell. And I'm giving uh, Roma Womo a 9 out of 10. Um, I just think this is awesome. And if it were easier to find, it might be a 9.5 or a 10 out of 10 for me. It ticks all the boxes. I love the bottle. It lasts on my skin. It's easy to wear. It's masculine. It's unique. If you can find this for $20, $30, even $40, it's a steal. Bye, guys. That is my review of Roma Womo by Laura Bigiotti. If you have any questions on this fragrance, please feel free to reach out. We will be back next week with more videos. Guys, you know what it is. My name is Maximilian. One, two, and I'm brothers think I'm new, but that's there for instance. I was into rap before they could form a sentence. I'm finally getting mine after coming a far way. But nowadays, I just lounge and fall